Hey folks, and welcome to a new thing we're doing. My name is Jesse, and this is... Melissa! We're here to give you Melissa's Top 10 Board Games. Number 10 comes to us with a little bit of spice. Ah. But still really nice. Scoville. Scoville makes it in as number 10. It's something that we played a lot, that we didn't have a copy of our own at first. And then once we got our own copy, I realized how much I really did enjoy playing it. And by the way, I should also say that these are all games that we own, correct? Yes. All, yeah, so all nothing out of what we own, which our collection is in the 400 uh, games area. One day you can ask us to do a top 400 and yeah, maybe okay. that can happen. Top 400. Ah. Number nine. Okay, this one, I'm gonna have to take a little ride for a little zug um zug ticket to ride. Oh, okay. Anniversary edition. Well, sure, this is 10th anniversary edition, but it is ticket to ride. I love the phone app. Um, adaptation as well as playing it on the computer. Having the 10th anniversary edition is really nice. It has all the really, really well made uh, train cars in it and little tins that they come in. And so it's just definitely been one of my favorites over the years. Base like games is that. still my favorite of all of them. Such really nice little cars, little plastic cars. A little yep. better than Scoville, huh? Yeah, All right. a little better. But there's eight games that you think are better than Ticket to Ride. And I think Ticket to Ride and Scoville kind of make towards the bottom as opposed to the others just because of how much they've been played over the years or what kind of maybe something that specifically happens with a certain game. Number eight, I'm gonna stitch this together hmm. with a little patchwork. Ah, two-player game. Patchwork coming in. Now this okay. is another one that has a really, really good uh, phone app that you can play as well as on the computer. I've loved playing this game. It's so it's so easygoing, but it can be really thinky. Um, it has a different play every time you play it. It's very colorful as well as like it's easy to play on the table to set up as well as play on the the phone app, so it's mm -hmm. just a really nice two-player game I've enjoyed. It's a Nouveau Rosenberg, art by Clemens Franz, who makes a lot of the Uven Rosenberg art. Um, this is the first game I really have something like uh, of these three that we've shown so far. This is at the end of my list. I do like the game, but I actually prefer its app form because mm -hmm. it's less messy. And we made this version better because we got our own buttons. It comes with the cardboard button, but we ordered uh, these wooden buttons that are just so much for, more fun to play with. Even though you don't have the fives and the tens. I mean, we thought about hot gluing them at one yeah. point, but I think just <laughs> having just them by, yeah, yeah, having them by itself is fine. Number seven. Number seven. Splendor. Splendor. And now this is a very heavy mm. box right now because it has all of the expansion elements in this box as well. Cities of Splendor. Yeah. This is one of the only games that I remember teaching a non-gamer. I don't teach games all regularly to begin with and especially to a non-gamer that had never really played much, but this one I felt like was at that level that's really understandable. But I've just always enjoyed Splinter as just an easygoing game. I like playing the bass. It's easy to explain to a non-gamer to try to get them into gaming. I like it. And I think I could play it a lot. I don't know if it reaches anywhere near my top 10, but this is one I'm like, all right. I think why it got so high in mine is because I can play this one over and over, maybe a little bit more than some of the others. Solid number seven. Yeah. But there's six games you like more than this. Let's see what they are. Let's, Let's see if see they live up to the hype. See if you agree. If you agree, post in the comments. Oh, here we go. Number six. Oh, we go to the Isle, the Isle of Cats. Now, this was my very first Kickstarter, and I went all in. It's got like the... Um, it's a good the... thing you did, though, because it's a really good game. What's really cool about this one, too, is when you open up the top of the box, which our cat did indeed do, is they have this for you. So I thought that was okay. really pretty awesome. This little cat setup is like, oh, cat goes here. Tons of little wooden pieces. The Isle of Cats Bag of Cats additional, which has all the detailed 
art on all the cat. Plus all the little food pieces are all wooden too, like the little fish. I think I just like piecing things together. Like how I like making the quilt, I like figuring out how to get all the cats to fit on the It's the figuring out a puzzle. Yep, which I do like puzzles, so yeah. <laughs> that makes That's sense. It. Number five. Yeah, let's slide this to the other side. So there's three boxes on the table. Why? Why? Well, okay. When I first got this game, which the game is Archaeology, the card game, mm -hmm. I we found this. I found this at a garage sale, and it's in fairly poor shape on the box itself. Yeah. But the cards inside were fine. Like the actual playability of the cards were perfectly fine, and I loved it so much. We eventually got the new expedition yep. edition of it and it has a few new components to it Shinier. It's, yeah it's it's really nice and then because this is just one of our storing yeah, yeah. so we have a uh, a little case that we hold 16 storage units in these units are about this big and uh, so we store 16 games that we can walk around with a suitcase of games. All that's in here is pretty much in there. And then this is just my old original. It's no surprise that they reprinted this because it's just such a solid game. Yeah, I really love this one. I've, I've actually taught this game in the flea market line at Dice Tower. Like I was standing in line waiting for the Flea market, a bunch of us would just bring games and just sat on the floor in the convention center and taught that to people. Card game wise, it's my favorite card game. Phil sure. Walker Harding makes a lot of great games that I've considered putting on my own top 10. If you're interested in seeing my top 10, it'll be on this channel soon after this one. <gasps> We're already on number four. Top four, <gasps> folks. Top four. Azul. Azul. Now, memory wise, Base Azul. this was the very first game ever brought to the table mm -hmm. three years ago when we first on started. On this yes. channel! When we first started the channel, this was the first one. And we streamed it live on YouTube and Twitch. And now um, we just stream on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Hardboard Games. So that's number four. That's number Azul, four. Azul, a solid one. I like it. Yep. We're getting into the top three. Top three. <sighs> All right, here we go. Number three coming at us. The castles the of castles Burgundy. The castles of Burgundy. Bergen von Bergen. <gasps> now, I am a really big Feld fan as far as having pretty much just about all of his collection in mm. my in our collection, my collection of Feld. Um, there's like whole shelves dedicated to just Feld <laughs> in mm -hmm. our collection. It is the... I guess big name of Feld. You know, Feld has tons of big name games. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's tons of them. But I think Castles of Burgundy is definitely like if you wanted to mention a Feld game to a gamer just starting out and and experiencing yeah. Euro Euro games, this is the one you're going to tell them. So. It's Feld's hit. Yeah, it's his radio <laughs> hit. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, definitely. Um, this, yeah, every time he goes on stage, they're like. The castles of Burgundy! Yeah. The castles of Burgundy! He's like, oh gosh. Oh, the castles. Every time. All right, gotta perform for the people. Yeah. Um, I love the um, the style of the map, how you develop maps. So yet again, there is that kind of style coming back. Yeah, you're filling out your map. Filling out a map. I, I just think that that mechanic in general is, is a favorite. I mean, all map. games have, you're progressing in some way. Yeah. But it's this just, one this one's less yeah. puzzly than patchwork or Isle of Cats. The puzzle in this one is figuring out how they fit together, but you already know generally how it's going to go. Yeah, because you have it already developed on the, like yeah. you have a, a grid. You're just trying to fill in and you're trying to get all of one type before the next yeah, person. Yeah, it's not the size of the pieces in this one. It's more like qualifications yeah. that the piece has. Um, this game has been reprinted. We did not pick up the new edition. I honestly don't think it looks better than the old one. Yeah, and I like our old edition because this mm -hmm. has so much memory factor to me. I guess I have such fond memories of like You can this. always have both. You can still play your old version. Uh, there's there's an app for this. This is online at BGA now. Uh, BGA and Alpha at the time we're recording this. Bois de Jeux has the best version oh, in my yeah, opinion, but it's also one. on yukata.de. And if you're not familiar with any of those sites, uh, look down in the description below. There's a video we made all about digital ways you can play games with each other. 
Yep, I still love the Castles of Burgundy. I am currently playing a game of this right now on BGA, so clearly I still really like this. Castles of Burgundy, number three. Number three. This is a hard one to beat. Yeah. So, I mean, let's yeah. find out what's number one and number two. Go ahead, let's bring it on. All right, number two. Number two is, not looking, Wingspan. Wow. Okay, so. Okay. Um, I think any game that you you regularly wear the t-shirt for, mm. that you uh, <laughs> that you show, you know, you you show on a regular basis, um, you might have as your favorite. <laughs> um, I I love Wingspan as far as just a game in general. I find it so interesting to play every time we've ever played it. Um, I you know I've invested in getting a lot of the right. um, upgraded you know we've we've invested a lot in getting some upgrades to the game um we've gotten the the first player token wooden oh everything piece. in here is wooden yeah pretty much everything in here is like yeah. it's all next level stuff in here yeah so got that um we do have the wooden birdhouse berries and all that so yeah um, we do have the wooden birdhouse but i just haven't put it together yet because i actually Oops. do like using the birdhouse that just came with the game any game that comes with its own dice tower mm -hmm. to me is like amazing like what other game can you name off the top of your head that comes with its own dice tower like that to yeah. me was like really appealing right off the bat and then um, all the different elements of the things that we've invested to, to upgrade. Um, we replaced the cubes with uh, 3D printed birdhouses. And those I believe we found on Etsy. Yeah. We found this pretty early in the game. Now there's tons of options. Yeah. There might even be official ones for all I know. But yeah, we we, we wanted to pimp this out yeah. really, really And we do early. have the European uh, expansion in yeah. this as well, which comes with the purple and Well, now there's an expansion that we don't have. Oh. Called so the now, Oceana, uh, Oceana, something like that. Well, now, now we got a new expansion to to, to get. Right. For sure. But and yeah. the box that comes with all the cards, I really like this because yeah. not only is it the storage box that you store all the cards in, it also is where you put the cards on the top of the box for mm -hmm. display. Yeah, it just makes sense. And then they do something that a lot of boxes don't do: is tell you where everything goes. Oh. I'm, ah. I never, I never really realized that. Well, you never that. pack up no. the box. <laughs> Has a great app implementation where they read out the facts on the card, and also right. there's bird tweeting that is accurate to the bird itself. Oh yeah. So if you click on it, you get to hear what the bird sounds like, which is really cool. And then all the art moves and stuff oh. like that. It's really nice. But that's number two, wingspan number two. That this surprises me. Uh, I knew you liked it a lot. I didn't know you liked it yeah. a lot, a lot. It would be one that's like, if we had to ever think, oh, what would have to be in the collection, this would not leave. Well, like, imagine all of go. these wouldn't leave. <laughs> yeah, like none of these will ever not be on the shelves. <laughs> right. If we had to downside for any reason, these will stay. <laughs> well, there's one more that'll stay. And actually, a few honorable mentions before that. So before we hit number one, what are your honorable mentions? Okay, so the very number one honorable because I kind of put them in a tier level for myself, just okay. to kind of... You know. She didn't have to get copies of this here, Yeah. but she did. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, so here's one of my absolute top honorable mentions. It almost made the list. The only one beating it out was Scoville. Mm. This almost made 10 because this is one of so our- So heavy. Yes. This is one of probably our our first games ever, really. Yeah. Besides, mm. you know, besides like stuff when we played like Magic the Gathering and things, but really like card it game was, wise. It was kind of our gateway game. Mm -hmm. It was our introduction to deck builders. Mm -hmm. And I love deck builders. Mm -hmm. Like it's just that mechanic is amazing. Although, no deck builders here. No, not really. In your uh, top 10. No. I'm working on my uh, top 10 right now, and I definitely have some deck builders in there. But it's still an amazing game. I mean, it's definitely one that uh, I've requested playing even uh, you know, pretty recently, within the last year, two years or so. I, request, <laughs> I requested playing this When it comes to board game, that's, that's, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's the time. 
It's like, oh yeah, I played that like two years ago. Yeah. It's fine. That's recent. But it's still an amazing game. It's definitely one of my favorites for sure. Well, what else makes that list of one of your favorites that couldn't reach the top 10? Couldn't quite reach it. Blood Rage. Blood Rage was one of those, like, I almost put it in versus one of the other ones in like that 8, 9, 10 kind of category. But some of them, like I said, with Splendor, I can go and play Splendor so quickly mm -hmm. like by myself like even on a computer app or even the patchwork one you know i can play it and i play it like more consistently because it's just like a quick easy fun kind of game whereas blood rage it really does take some time you know it's it's more of a you know full-on put it at the table take a little bit more than 30 minutes kind yeah. of time time game and there's so much stuff in this box. I'm not going to open it here, but we painted the pieces. If you want to see that, look in the description below. And we have a video all about those painted pieces. Okay, something else that makes an honorable mention. Here. Another Feld, a favorite Feld of mine. Oh Great. my. So this didn't make the top 10. And the I only, honestly thought this was one of your other number ones. The only or possible number one. The only reason this didn't make it into the top 10 is sometimes it's very difficult, especially for a Euro game that people aren't as familiar with. Like, people are mm -hmm. familiar with Castles of Burgundy. It is, like you said, his radio hit game. Yeah. The Castles of Burgundy! But not as many people might be as familiar with Bruges, and sometimes it's really difficult to get a Euro failed game to the table that people aren't as familiar with, unless you just really have someone who is going to, like, teach it really well. Much it does or does not get to the table is what decided that. Yeah, point. I mean, because this used to be the number one, I think. Yeah. But honorable mention, still pretty good. Yep. So what else you got in the honorable mentions? Okay, I think I got just one one more, or one or two more. Here we go. Somewhere over here. So this is going to be a really awkward honorable mention, but uh, <laughs> only because it's very childhood for me. This is like throwback to my childhood. No one's going to hate on this. No. <laughs> Let me know what you think of categories in the comments below. I love this game since I was a kid. Look at the dust on this bad yeah. boy. <laughs> it's a little dusty. Oh my, my apologies. Gosh. You're gonna wipe it off before the. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, it's too late now. It's too late now. Now it's getting all over the table. That's even worse. That's 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 childhood dust. TV Morning. shows that begin with A. Go. <laughs> it's time for Animaniacs. TV. There you go. Did you get that one? <laughs> All right, so that's all your honorable mentions. I think I have one last one. So this okay. one is a cute little game that comes with this piece here. This is Cat Lady. Yeah, I love these cards. I love the the way you set them out on the table and the little cat comes along and sits next to the cards and you pick up all the cards and you, you have to feed your cats, you have to try to put them in costumes, you have to make sure they get the right kind of food because some cats don't want chicken, they want milk. And you want to give them toys, maybe even some catnip. I play this on my phone a lot too. Yeah, I was gonna say there's a great app version. The game is simple in its choice because you're just taking out three cards. That's it. All right, so that brings us to number one. And this is a big one, so let me get it. The Godfather. What? <laughs> no. Didn't already see it on the front of the box. This is signed by Eric Lang. Well, I was fortunate enough to be able to get him to sign it at Dice Tower about three years ago or so mm -hmm. now. I had my little markers ready. Like I was like patiently just trying to wait and like he was talking with somebody. And then I see him like, while he's kind of listening to this person talking, like pulling out his own markers, hence the gold. He knew. Yeah. Because it's so like. It wasn't his first yeah. rodeo. <laughs> and then he comes up to me and is like, oh, can I sign this for you? Like, you're asking me if you can sign the. I'm like, That's, yes. It's but I'm a like, classy I'm like, move. Oh my gosh. It was. Because, yeah, so Kevin awesome. Smith out here does the same thing at airports whenever he sees, oh, yeah, that person recognizes me. He goes up there and says, hey, can I take a picture with you? And they're always surprised like yeah, that too. Right. So I took all of one Mardi Gras holidays, which is like a full week for us down here in the South. Um, I took the whole week to paint all the miniatures in this Which game. you can see on a video in the comments yes. below. Not only did he sign the outside of the box for me, while I was there with him, I wanted to show him what I painted. So he took pictures with me with all of my painted miniatures as well and then on top of that not only did he sign the outside of the box he signed the board as well <laughs> and so 
Now, on the when board. we played, when we played this, we played with this copy, right? Yes, I think so. Okay, so that's also in the comments, yeah, uh, the somewhere. description below our playthrough there of this is. game. It says, "Join me," and there's a little fish and Eric Lang. Yeah, so Eric board. Lang art even. <laughs> and then the box says, uh, "Spoiler: the cat is the real Dawn." Yeah. You put that in the blinds next to the mm. cat. So there's something to be said about a game that you, like, I put a lot of time and a lot of love into painting all the miniatures in this game. Plus, all your cards go in these amazing little tin boxes, as well as, you know you love a game when you put, you, when you sleeve all your cards. Yeah. <laughs> so card sleeve, tiny tin boxes, everything painted and signed. It's. Well, let's talk about yeah. this number one, because this number one is so much different than all the other ones. And I think a lot of what has to do with it is um, there's very few games that I want to play more than once in one sitting. And I specifically remember us playing this just two player at the table. And yeah. as soon as we finished playing, I said, I want to play it again. Let's play it again. And I mm -hmm. very rarely do that. <coughs> Usually it's just kind of like a one and done. Let me play the game and then no, we'll move on. I think Azul gets the same treatment mm -hmm. as that. Repeat plays. Patchwork gets repeat plays. Yeah. Um, maybe a la Cats did? I think we left that on the table the first day we Maybe so, it. and just to kind of get a, a feel for it. But oh, Archaeology always gets yeah. repeat plays. Cat Lady gets repeat plays. Yeah, there's there was there's very few times I'm ever going to be like, yeah, let's play it again. Especially for a game like this is of not... Of this size, yeah. This is not a quick game by any At means. At two players, it's not... Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's not terribly long, but I mean, it's two to five, but you, 60 to Like, it amps minutes. up a lot on time uh, spent at the table whenever you get to four or five players. Five players, this is your game all night. It yeah. says 90 minutes, but I mean, I think that, that can You go can take a lot of time on it. Um, yeah. I like the area control of it, and that's a lot of Eric Lane games. They are area control. Which, control that's what I was saying. Blood like, Rages, too. Right, but that didn't make top 10. I'm talking about, like, of your top 10. This one stands out as not like the others because there's not really area control in any of these other games that I can think of. I think I think what really does it for me is just the meaning, the meaning behind like the sure, story behind that always it. Adds it a lot. always um, like I almost put Wingspan above this. I really did. I went Ooh. back and forth and back and forth because Wingspan has a really special place in my heart too because. Uh, when we played Wingspan mm -hmm. at convention one year, and posted in the description below. Yep, and uh, and we had some memorable moments that happened during that stream with Wingspan and Elizabeth Hargrave yeah. showed up in our Twitch chat. It was like talking to us, which is like we that's played, like, oh uh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, with Danny and Derek. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. I was off to the side, but you were playing, and Ronald. Uh, Ronald was with it. Yeah, yeah, me and Ronald, and then we just it, it was just a really awesome moment because it almost. It almost didn't happen. We we were just fortunate enough to work it out schedule wise to play it. And yeah. Wingspan was kind of a really big thing that year. Um, and then I went and got all like the I got the T-shirt for it and got all the little special parts for it. And so Wingspan almost topped The Godfather, which I didn't ever think this has been my favorite for a while now. I didn't think anything would top it, and Wingspan is like right there, <sighs> neck and neck almost with it um, because. Mm. If I could have made a tie, I would have tied them both and made Castles of Burgundy number two. If I could, have, like, wow. I could have tied them. Just because, well, then what comes in at number uh, ten then? Um, in that case, I guess it would have been Legendary. It was because Legendary, I almost okay. put Legendary at ten. That didn't take long to think of. <laughs> uh, no, no, Legendary is definitely. I love that one. It was the top tier honorable mention because I, it almost didn't beat out Scoville. The only reason I picked Scoville over Legendary is how much it would get to the table yeah. more than the other. That's something I mm -hmm. had to consider when I was trying to put together a top list. Cause I mean, I, I spent all night, I was like arguing with myself left and right. No, 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 this is going to go here. No, no. I mean, until like right before I'm like, did I make the right list? Did I put the right numbers? Because you, you, those are kind of things that I think about when it comes to like, what are your favorite games? Cause it's hard. You, you get that, very hard. you get that question constantly yeah as a gamer and and you you have all these games you love and it's like well how do i even say like what's one better than the other like to say the godfather is better than wingspan is better than isle of cats to me they're all amazing they're all like i want to put them at the table all the time but mm -hmm. how do i rank them and i had to kind of think of that you know 
you know, repeat playability. What is going to have the most difference? Mm -hmm. You know, when I play Splendor versus if I was to play Ticket to Ride, how much more am I going to play one than the other? Even if I think of like, if I play it on the app or I play it on the computer, which one would I go to before the other? That to me kind of ranks it. When I think of The Godfather, I think, gosh, I put a lot of time and effort. Like, I spent time to really think out, like, I want the miniatures to be painted like this, and I want the cards to be sleeve. Those kind of things kind of put it a little bit above some other games. Yep, I hope I, I, hope I did all right on my uh, choices. I'm sure there's a million other games out there that could have been on this top 10, but I could only have 10, and I think I even went a little, I, a, a little over on my honorable mentions, but there were just so many good ones. I, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I had to give some shout outs, honorable mentions as much as I could. So that was Melissa's top 10. Let us know what you think about that in the comments below. Subscribe while you're here, because there's more opinion stuff like this coming forward in the future. But until next time, the box is, is closed. closed.